Hi, now we're going to talk about clinical reasoning. And clinical reasoning is the process by which we take information that we get from a patient and then come up with a diagnosis that we use to then treat the patient. And so in this video, we're just going to go through the overview. And again, in subsequent videos, we will come back to individual pieces of this so that you can see in more detail how it works. One important thing that I want to stress at the onset is that clinical reasoning is not a yes or no answer. Unlike what you're going to be doing in your first two years during your studies, you will find that there's usually a, a correct or a wrong answer to a question. In, with clinical reasoning, that is not the case. What happens is we will have uh, answers that are most likely right or probably wrong. It's all about probabilities. And you're going to gather information to push those probabilities of being right higher and those probabilities of being wrong lower. Okay, so let's get into the video. Okay, like I said in the first video, we're going to be talking about a brief overview of clinical reasoning. And we start with a patient and the symptoms that they come in, come in with, and then we have to think about it, and then come up with a diagnosis and a treatment plan. And so this requires taking knowledge that you have about diseases, and those knowledges that you're going to get is going to come from all the book knowledge that you get during your first two years. And you also got to get information from your patient. So two sources of information. You need to connect those things together through your reasoning, and through that you come up with a diagnosis and a treatment plan. And so information from the patient can really come from multiple different sources. It could be the initial data that you get, which could be their vital signs or even how they look or what, what they told the nurses. The history is that which you ask the patient and they tell you. So it's a subjective component of what they are feeling. The physical is what you measure from the patient, what you examine, what you observe, what you, what you find, uh, and the results of testing as well. So symptoms and signs together are often referred to as a syndrome if it fits a particular disease. So you take all of this information together and then you combine that with the book knowledge in your clinical reasoning to come up with a diagnosis and treatment. So there's a process of doing this and you know we broke it down into four steps here. The first thing you need to do is acquire data. Then you're going to interpret and organize that data, make hypotheses and test those hypotheses. So when you acquire data, you collect information and that is taking a history, taking a physical exam, uh, getting and ordering lab results and knowing which things to look for as well is really important in there. Which labs do you order? You can't order everything. Then you got to take that information and make sense of it. You need to interpret that data. You need to organize it. And so we're going to learn how to do that. And after that, once you've organized the information, you need to start making some guesses of what you think this person has. And a list of diagnoses, a list of possible explanations for a disease is called a differential diagnosis. That means these are the, all the things that it could possibly be. And finally, you have to test that differential. You need to test every single diagnosis on your differential to determine um, how likely it is that the patient has that. And so here we, we're going to talk about like, likeliness now. Likeliness is going to be a thing about probabilities, as we said. Okay, and probability goes from 0 to 100. 0 means you're absolutely sure that the person does not have this, and 100% means you're absolutely sure that the person does have this. Now, in medicine, it is not possible to have certainty. Now, you could be pretty, 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 pretty darn likely that someone has something or, or, or the converse where you're pretty sure that they don't, but you can never reach 100% or 0% uh, certainty. It's not possible. So usually what we need to do is we need to settle for good enough. You know what? That I, I think I'm convinced enough that the patient has it. Okay, and so you're then going to go to one of three options based on how likely you think something is. If you're pretty sure that they don't have it, then you might consider, all right, maybe I am going to rule out this diagnosis. I am not going to consider it further. I'm going to call that trash it here. On the opposite end, if you're pretty sure that they do have a diagnosis, you're going to rule in that hypothesis and you're going to start treatment for it. Okay, and I'm going to call that the treat it. And in the middle, in the middle zone, if you're not sure that they don't have it and you're not sure that they do have it, then you don't know and you need to collect more information. And so you need to get more data and test those hypotheses. And I'm going to call it the test it zone. So we have three zones, the treat it, the test it, and the trash it zone. Where you set those boundary points between these two is is up up to lots of different things. And we're going to talk about that later. But it, you know, if you're if it's dangerous 
to miss a disease, then you, you don't want to miss something. You don't want to be 30% sure. Maybe you want to be 2% sure that they miss a disease. Could be a deadly disease. So you don't want to rule out something until you're pretty, pretty, pretty darn sure they don't have it. If it's something that doesn't really have too much consequence, maybe it's like the common cold, they might sniffle for a while, then you say, you know what, I don't have to be 2% sure. I could be 30% sure that they don't have it before I rule that out. Okay, and the same thing happens on the other end uh, with treating. You know, you're going to set this threshold at different levels, and we will talk more about that. So again, you're going to acquire data, interpret and organize that data, make hypotheses, and test those hypotheses. You'll do it multiple times for the initial data, for your history, for your physical, and your diagnostic testing. And I just put these two together because it just you know, becomes easier. So once you go through this process, then for your differential, you got to make a, a, a decision based on, um, for each diagnosis in your differential, you're either going to trash it, you're going to test it, or you're going to treat it. And you'll do that after each time that you do this. Now, let's say you get through the initial data and you, you're not sure about something. You need to test it more. Well, then you need to collect more data. And after the, what's the data you're going to collect? You're going to get your history and physical. If at that point you're still unsure, you need to collect more data. Well, then you need to go get more testing results, right? So this is the order in which we collect the data. Now, I didn't. What I didn't draw on here is that this line can get. If we're still unsure of things, well, we can go back and get more testing, or we can go all the way back here and get more history and physical information uh, if we need to to bet to get more information. So this is the very, very simplified version of what we're going to be talking about in this next series of videos, is how you acquire data, interpret, make hypotheses, and test hypotheses in order to test it, treat it, or trash it, okay? And right here, I, I wrote down some different places that you can get this information from. So in the next series of videos, we're going to go through each of those in peace and scattered throughout. I'm going to try to put some videos of actual uh, patient presentations to kind of give you examples of how all of this works. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye.